Today is unfortunately the official day that all Nintendo fans have been fearing for the last year. On March 3rd, 2017, Nintendo launched their first hybrid console called the Nintendo Switch. Now, what was unique about the Nintendo Switch was not only that it was its first hybrid console, but it was the first console of its kind, allowing users to not only have a home console, but also a portable console, that there was no difference in the games and how and when they were played. If you wanted to play Breath of the Wild on your big flat screen TV, you could do that. If you wanted to go and play that same game on a tiny 7 inch display, you could do that. The Switch gave gamers so much freedom with how and when they could play their games. That really was not a thing in 2017. Uh, pretty much before this, you had to buy a Wii U and a 3DS, or a Wii and a DSi, or an N64 and a Game Boy Advance. You had to always have two systems, and the games that you bought for both systems never were the same. Uh, pretty much you would... <laughs> You would have, yes, it is a similar concept in a game, but uh, a lot of times the format in which the game would play or how much of the game was in the game was would be completely different. And honestly, the fact that we as gamers dealt with that for so long is just amazing and just astonishing. But uh, unfortunately, all good things do have to come to an end. As in last year, 2022, uh, Nintendo pretty much decided to uh, give us a parting gift in that uh, they were going to be shutting down their eShops for their legacy consoles. Uh, in this case, it was the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii U. And they basically said, hey, you've got until March 27th, uh, 2023. This isn't anything new for Nintendo or really console makers as a whole. I mean... Uh, Nintendo did that, did a very similar thing with the Wii U or the Wii and the DSi uh, channels. Uh, they pretty much just said, hey, you know, we, you, you can't buy new games, you can download old games. And then they eventually later took away that feature. Uh, and Sony's done very similar things with the PSP, the Vita, uh, the PS3. And it, it's understandable. Now, I myself have been enjoying the 3DS even after I've owned a Switch and a Switch Lite. I, I, there are very much some games that I've just, I fell in love with playing on my 3DS. That being said though, unfortunately, I and many other gamers that have been doing the same thing have unfortunately been part of the minority. Uh, most gamers have switched pun intended, uh, to the Switch for most of their gaming. And it makes sense, you know. Uh, games that were on the 3DS and the Wii U were very much, I don't want to say hardware limited, but you could never put a lot of the games that have been on the Switch on either platform. Games like Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, The Witcher 3, these are all just some of the games that even on the switch push it to its hardware capabilities now to think that about trying to support two consoles well one of which was a success the other one which wasn't it just it wasn't going to happen and gamers always want to play the latest and greatest things they don't want to only ever play games on their old consoles so it it does make sense that being said, though, some gamers are kind of just saying, yeah, no, we're, we're going out with a bank. And it's, a li it, it, it's not surprising, but to the extent of what some gamers are doing, it truly is astonishing, all the work that they're putting in. Uh, one of the most famous examples in the, the recent weeks has been a, a popular uh, YouTuber uh, slash gamer called The Completionist. He uh, he's kind of gone and said, "Yeah, no, we're we're going, we're going." Uh, he <laughs> went out over the course of an entire year, uh, three hundred and twenty-one days. He went out and bought every single Wii U and 3DS game, whether that was a physical game that he could have just bought physically, whether that was a digital-only game, a DLC, a retro classic game, he bought 
everything, totaling well over 20,000 US dollars to complete the entire transaction. Yes, 10, or over $20,000 for 10 years, 10 year old games in some instances. Uh, in his video, he goes on and talks about in detail about everything that he had to do, you know, the year or the time it took to execute it between needing the funds, because fun fact, you couldn't use your credit card after August of last year. You had to use eShop cards for this. Um, basically, he, he goes more in depth in his video, and I'll link it down below if anyone would like to watch it. Uh, it is a really good video, and it it's very interesting hearing about all of the work that needed to go in, because for the Wii U, all of their games, when he went in and downloaded it, was over a terabyte worth of storage space that he needed, which is just astonishing, trying to think about holding that many games. I mean... I, 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 I'm a da data pack rack, but to think about a terabyte worth of Wii U games is just weird, because the Wii U never really got games, to be honest. Um, in total, it uh, like I said earlier, it took him 321 days, almost an entire year for him to execute this project from start to finish. So it's, it's, it's scary to think that a year of his time went to this. Now, I won't go white knighting Nintendo over the matter. I do understand, like I said earlier, why they took the actions that they did. The Switch has been their main focus for several years now. I mean, the Switch came out in 2017, and it is now 2023. And especially in recent weeks, there's been a lot of conversation about the next Nintendo Switch uh, and the rumors that have been coming out about that. So it does make sense why they would want to do this. Supporting older systems takes... A large amount of time and uh, money essentially to go and allow people to do this and it would make sense that Nintendo wants to put those resources towards the switch and later the next switch or whatever their next console ends up being that being said I'm really sad that this is where we are now the Wii U never really fully interested me um, you know, I, I very much like Nintendo games. I like playing those first party games, but I also like buying a console where I can play some third party games as well. The Wii U never had that. That being said, though, the 3DS was it, it, it was it held and still holds a very special place in my heart. Um, I got a 3DS in 2014, so well after it, it had came out and I, I remember so many instances when I was a kid and I would go in and during my study hall or sometimes during class, I would be sitting there playing my 3DS, sometimes road trips or when I should have been outside playing, I had my 3DS. The 3DS was a very special place in my heart and it, it was so important that I not only owned one two or three i own four different 3ds systems all of which get access and use on a fairly regular basis <sighs> some of my favorite games for the 3ds the box boy trilogy of games super mario 3d land the legend of zelda a link between worlds those were so fun and interesting because i had never played games like that before and then when you go and factor in that i was able to start getting into retro gaming on the 3ds with the nintendo entertainment system and the game boy advance retro games that they put out on the system i just i had so many games that i could play and really up until Breath of the Wild came out, the 3DS was the best place. If you were a Zelda fan, it was the best place to play all of the Zelda games because, yeah, minus the Super Nintendo um, being on the new 3DS only, if you had one of those systems, you could play literally every single Zelda game that ever came out. And then if you got the the uh, the new 3DS, you got access to the the rest of the library and all the other games. And it was just 
to think that you only had to buy one console and you could play all of those games. It was so important. And I do have to say, it, it, it's sad that so many of these companies are choosing to do this nowadays. Like, obviously, they should make a profit. They should make money off of this. But the entire gaming industry is losing access to so many of these cool and amazing games just because they don't want to upfront the money for servers anymore. And it's, it's really sad because there has to be another way that we can preserve all of these games so that if somebody wants to go and buy one of these games, they can just go on a website or go on a computer, download it and put it on the console. I mean, if you were someone that went out and you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a on a 3DS getting retro classic games getting physical re e retail eShop games or whatever if you did that from day one yeah you can still go in and download the games you can still play them back if you know tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now or a year from now you know you you want to go in and play an old game that you bought and you didn't have downloaded you can do that but even that will end at some point and then you're going to lose access to all of those digital games that you spent your money on and the fact that nintendo doesn't make any way of getting those games and guaranteeing that you have access to those games long term is really really sad and to be honest it, it really does make me cautious about supporting digital storefronts i mean i was a user of google stadia and thankfully with google stadia you know when that service shut down you got a refund i got all of my money back that i invested it which i'm very thankful for because i had put in a lot more money than i thought i did <laughs> But for this, you, you don't get any of your money back. You're pretty much just like, oh, thank you for doing business with us. Thank you. Now go and buy a Switch and go and buy all of the games all over again. Or in some cases, you can't even do that. Uh, the, the one big thing that was nice about the 3DS and the Wii U was that you could buy your NES, your Super Nintendo, your N64, your Game Boy. You could buy all those games. You didn't have to be part of NSO Online which a lot of people including myself i would i would be perfectly comfortable with just rebuying these games if it meant i could keep access to them even after the service shuts down i don't i i over the last year have tried to cut back on subscriptions because i don't always use subscriptions nso is one of those things where it's just like I have to keep paying for it, even though I don't play online all that often, because I want those retro games. So, I mean, it, it's sad that this is where we're at. It's sad that today is officially the day that all of this is happening. But if there's one thing I have to say, at least some people like The Completionist went out with a bank. They got anything that they might ever want to play. And they can play whatever the heck they want to play. Even if most people did not go as far as he went, it's happy. It, it makes me happy to see that some people still cared about those platforms, even in their dying days. So, uh, as always, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, for whatever reason, you can by all means hit the dislike button. Uh, if you do enjoy my content though, uh, please do hit the subscribe button. We do live streams as well as these shorter, uh, just kind of chatting kind of videos uh, fairly regularly and they will become more regular uh, moving forward. Uh, so yeah, uh, I put them up. Uh, I live stream anywhere between three to four times a week and I'm doing these kinds of videos about two to three times a week now. So if you guys do enjoy my content, a subscribe would be really appreciated. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing everyone on our next digital adventure.